hey there. Uh, I've got my new Donner DST uh, 200DX guitar. Just came in today. Have not opened it, have not looked at it, have no idea what's in here. It is a, as my cameraman said earlier, quite triangular box, so probably a guitar, we think. That's, that's the plan. But hopefully, uh, I mean, the outside of the box looks like it came through uh, relatively unscathed. There's a, there's a slight little impression right here, if you want to show that, Mr. Cameraman. Uh, that kind of was dented in, but hopefully there's enough packaging inside here that that won't be any kind of issue. We shall see. It might be a bunch of sawdust by the time we open the box. But here we go. It's all taped up around all the edges. Job of that, and we're just gonna cut this tape. I'm so curious to see what's in here. So, I got a very incredible so far, like without having seen the guitar, an incredible deal on this thing. For some reason, this particular one was a hundred dollars, $99.99 on the Donner eBay site, and it was marked as new, brand new. At the same time, they had a refurbished one identical to this that was $159.99. Same accessories were supposed to come with it, same model, everything, same color, everything. But for some reason, the refurbished one, $60 more. I don't know why that is. Hopefully we don't get any like crazy bad surprises with this. I have faith, we'll see. Um, but with that in mind, here we go. Let's continue opening. Oh, by the way, uh, Donner actually had a 5% coupon on their site, uh, on their eBay site, whenever I just happened to be looking at this, I was able to apply that with taxes, and their shipping is free. Everything out the door, this was $101.80. This is in April of 2024, for any time reference when you see this. Um, but I was pretty blown away by that. It's hard to believe that even the parts could be had for that much. If I, I couldn't buy them for that. All right, wow. Here we go. So sort of a small, kind of an acoustic shaped bag, obviously not for an acoustic because it's only like an inch and a half thick. Uh, very, you know, fair looking bag. It's, um, there is, there's a, there's a little bit of padding. That's pretty cool, maybe like, it's sort of like quarter inch the padding. That is, by the way, this ba this guitar, guitar and its case are the only thing in this box so far. It's just an empty box with this giant ukulele bag um, in it. So um, let's check out the pocket first. I guess I can get rid of this part of the box for now. Hopefully won't have to use it to ship it back. Fingers crossed. But uh, okay, there's stuff in the pocket. Okay, so this is this is good. Uh, we've got the tremolo bar. Awesome. Glad they you know didn't forget that. That would have been a shame. Uh, truss rod, truss rod adjusting wrench here, and along with a very small. I'm guessing these are for the set. Uh, if you want to, yeah. Let's see this a little bit more detail here. So as you can see, there's a. We put on the wood here. Uh, you can see there's a small black one there. That's almost certainly going to be for raising and lowering the height of the saddles. And this will be for your truss rod adjustment. So that's cool that they've got that in there. And the tremolo bar. Make them face the same way so it's nice and OCD like that. And then we've got a shrink wrap package here with Donner instrument cable. And I'm really curious about this because I... Um, I got a firefly guitar a couple of months ago and it's been it's a beautiful guitar it was about twice what i paid for this um very beautiful looking did require quite a bit of setup to get uh decently playable but that's okay but what i found interesting with that is that the cable that came with it the instrument cable was really like the lowest quality cable i've ever seen uh, the thinnest 
I would never use this. Maybe I would give it to someone I didn't like who was learning to play guitar. You know, um, that's probably about all I do. All right, so I'm going to. Doesn't look like there's any clear way to open this shrink wrap. I think it's literally just shrink wrap. So I'm going to cut it. And now. So far, this is a real guitar cable. That is crazy. Oh my goodness, it's a right angle guitar cable. That's that's even better. I love right angles. It has this perfectly nice Velcro keeper here. Um, the ends look, you know, ch cheapish but not terrible at all. It's got reinforcement here on the ends that's a really nice touch this is a perfectly nice guitar cable we'll see if that actually works i don't know but it looks nice okay now let's see if there's anything else oh there's more how could there be more a strap a donner strap oh my goodness hey this might be okay this is okay Oh, this is like a nice, soft, sort of canvasy, little bit of elasticity to it. Uh, strap, nice uh, adjustment buckle here. The ends are just, you know, pleather, like that's fine. Uh, but they're stitched, they're reinforced and stitched. And there's the Donner name silk, uh, silk screened or foil stamped onto it. And this. I'm probably not gonna, might not use this per se, but for a beginner, this is amazing. Like if you were giving this to a young person who wants to learn, or even an older person wants to learn, uh, this would be comfortable and perfectly fine for playing. Like there's literally nothing wrong at all with that. That is a very cool surprise. Okay, that appears to be everything inside that pocket. So that's empty. Now the moment we've all been waiting for. If you want to uh, come in for this for this reveal, why don't you uh, come around over here so we can like unzip it from this side and everybody can just see it. Can you zoom out a little bit? Uh, we can just all see it at the same time. Good or bad, right? Here we go. Oh man, it's made out of tissue paper. That's great. Oh man, white tissue paper is one of my favorite guitar building instruments or materials. Okay, now of course it's packing. That that's nice though that it's wrapped again in, in a thin layer of this sort of foam paper. All right, so let's take this. Got this rubber band over here holding the foam on. Okay, I'm nervous, everybody. Here we go. I didn't get oh, to touch something. Okay. What's well, black? It looks nice. The paint looks nice. There's a little bit of you know foam dust, but that's okay. Oh, that's that's good to keep that from poking through the box. A little piece of styrofoam. Oh my gosh, it's already strung up. It's got two silica packets for moisture, that's cool. And, okay. Very thin old paper, but it's supposed to protect the strings, and it seems that it did. Oh, wow, okay. So if you see any little white specks on it, it's not necessarily any sort of manufacturing flaw. <laughs> okay, that's not going to just blow off. That's just dust, that's fine. Are you kidding me? Okay, here we go. Let's see if it's in tune. That's not too bad. It, I mean, it's not in tune, but I'm surprised it came from wherever and it's, uh, it's not too bad. Okay, so um, now we've got, let's just take a look. Nice, uh, looks like triple layer pick guard. We've got these old school Fender style, really old school Fender style um, saddles. Um, there's no 
groove for the strings to sit in so they're going to just be pulled the, wherever the tuners are pulling them that's fine that's it's just a place for the strings to sit they don't match the finish of the bridge and that's okay for me but if that's a problem for any of you just know this is so these are sort of like a like a light gold it looks like or maybe like a these yeah something like that and this is more of just like a straight chrome color it, the bridge and the the jack do match though okay moving on we've got plastic on the pickups that's fine that's great um, and then let's look over here at the at the fingerboard uh, wow I mean that it needs some oil it's really dry looking but oh my goodness that's like it's like real it's not just like a painted you know piece of it's not just painted on the maple uh, it's actually a strip of wood that's really great and it looks it looks like some kind of you know dark rose wood I don't know what they actually used uh, I believe on the eBay site it said there was a picture of this and it said it had an arrow that said purple heart pointing at this I find that hard to believe that it's actually purple heart it could be old purple heart that has lost all of its purple coloring because that does happen but I doubt it very much it's probably just some sort of either dyed or either dyed you know relatively hardwood or it is just a dark hardwood I you know I don't think it's uh, I, I don't know what it is but it looks okay so uh, okay wow the okay so there's no binding on this neck or this fingerboard but there is really no fret sprout that I can feel at all. That is amazing. They're not particularly... Oh yeah, yeah, you can, if you look at the edges, like if you look down this angle here, you might be able to see around here, like here, that there's a slight bevel. And it looks like they probably sanded the edge right here to take the to take the point, let me see if I can, I can get that a little bit. Uh, maybe you can see that. But just to kind of take the edges off the fingerboard. Okay, coming back up here, you know, you've got two really old school style uh, string trees, like double string trees. And you've got these tuners, which are the open slot old school tuners. Oh, that's cool. They, I don't even think the ad showed that. I think it showed like the more uh, modern, well, you know, what a lot of people have which is a hole through the post now I will say this all this hardware here matches perfectly with the saddles down here which is interesting right like this it's not quite all matching but that's totally fine now let's take a look at the back of these guys okay these are you know bare bones tuners I have not tried turning them yet oh it looks like they have maybe those might be some kind of pop metal heads but they could also potentially be like painted plastic with the way that seam looks it doesn't matter to me um, well that one feels pretty pretty smooth okay so far they seem smooth and not hard to turn uh, it looks like it comes with a tag with cords which is great I would have killed for something like this when I was a kid learning um, and then it's got a string action ruler in metric and standard so you can it doesn't look like it gives you any instructions on how to use that unfortunately but if you happen to be really you know in intuitive you might be able to just figure that out I think that's probably just pretty wishful thinking but anyway uh, oh now here's something DonnerDeal.com. That might be like an insider website because I've never heard of that. Maybe that's like, you know, hey, you've already bought a guitar from us. Here's how you get another cheap guitar. I don't know. But, man, this, oh yeah, that's okay. So the neck plate looks beautiful. Wow. Yeah, how cool. I mean, yeah, it's like maybe etched or laser engraved. Really cool looking. I mean, very handsome. We've got the uh, back plate that matches the pick guard. And look at, I mean, look at how flawless this finishes. It's as smooth as you 
ever want. I don't see any problems in it. Looking back here at the neck, you've got your skunk stripe here, which is, you know, hopefully from when they installed the truss rod and not just like painted in there. It's, it doesn't look like it's painted in there though. That, that, that's a, no, that is a strip of wood. You can actually, can you get real close right there and see the kind of reddish color? That's actual grain, so it's like black and red. So that's, that's pretty cool looking. It looks like it might be a little rough right here. The routing, I don't know if that shows up on camera. Yeah, it's a little irregular. It's not, you know, it's not a custom shop guitar. That's okay. We didn't ask it to be. So now I'm not going to pause this video for any reason. I'm gonna, sh there's no editing. I'm not gonna set this thing up and do intonation and all that stuff. I'm just going to take it and plug it in. I don't need that. But I do have an amp here. And I thought we could just plug it in and see if it makes sound. Because really, at this point, that will be enough. So, I didn't really have this previously set up, but I'm actually going to use the cable that Donner gave me. Shoot, I might, I might use the strap. Why not? YOLO. So this did not come with any picks or anything like that. It just came with, um, what do you see? I mean, you saw everything that came with it. So I'm gonna extend this out because I expect it's, I don't need it on its shortest setting unless it's made for American basketball players. Maybe the company in China thought that's what we were all like. I don't know. But uh, let's stretch that out a little bit. Or open it up a little bit. All right, cool. Oh yeah, that's, that's definitely gonna need some expanding still. Because uh, that wasn't going around these shoulders. Well, at least we know they didn't think we're all basketball players. Yeah, that's better. That'll work. Okay, so I've got that. I will say, it totally feels great. I mean, it is, it is not light. It's not like a toy at all. This is a real guitar. In fact, I would say this is on the heavier side of strats. Uh, probably, I don't know, eight and a half pounds, something like that. Could be wrong, but I don't think it's substantially lighter than that. It does not feel like a toy at all. It feels very much like a perfectly fine guitar. So here we go. Turn on the box. And we're gonna find out together. This thing does come with a split coil function, which means this humbucker can be a single coil. So I'm gonna try that right now. You're supposed to be able to pull up on this tone knob and it goes to single coil. So
back to the humbucker mode. So definitely a big volume drop when you go from humbucker to single coil. But then again, you are only going to one coil, so. A lot. Oh yeah, check it out. So this is a single coil and back to humbucker. Sounds pretty wicked. I mean, I don't have anything on it. I mean, I do wish this tone knob were more effective as a tone knob, but um, let's try it now with the humbucker and we'll go to this position. Oh, a little bit of noise, I thought, from that switch but maybe it was just, just too long in storage. We'll switch to position two which is uh, the humbucker and the middle coil. Okay, that is much muddier but it's probably just because the tone knob works. The tone knob actually works whenever you use this pickup along with huh? Couldn't really hear it. Oh. seems to adjust a little bit, uh, maybe, but let's see. Okay, now you have great control of this one. And now we go to this one, which is these two. Again, you get the Oh, wait. I thought I heard some hum. Actually, do you hear any hum out there, cameraman? Any hum? You would hear it now. You hear a little hum? Mm -hmm. Okay. He says, not really, maybe a little bit. And then the last little bit is just this neck pickup. Alright, so all the pickups work. You can adjust the tone to your liking. You could replace this pot. It's going to be a little bit more of a pain because of the split coil deal. Oh yeah. I don't know about the whole microphonic thing on this on these pickups. I didn't... It's a hundred dollar guitar. Let me see. Try tapping with it. Yeah, definitely microphonic there. Yeah, microphonic there. And then I don't know. I don't care. I don't mind micro. I like microphonic pickups. I might put some wax behind the covers of these pickups and see, but. I am super curious about this tremolo bar because I well, it's fun. It's it's a dinky feeling tremolo bar. It's not in, you know heavy duty, but with this floating bridge like this, you're not going to use this thing all the time unless you just love going out of tune. So it's extremely tight. Okay. I might need to take a spring out of the back because that is, ooh, that is I, mean, I feel like I'm going to break this thing. Uh, it, there's almost certainly too much tension on the spring. Actually, I watched a video the other day of a guy who had one of these. When he took the back plate off, he found out that the spring keeper on the left when you take the back plate off uh, was tightened all the way to the body. I bet you that's what's happening here. So I'm sure if I release that a little bit, it'll be much looser. We could even take a look at that if you want. Let me just turn off my amp here, take this off. But so far, man, extremely impressed. Like, wow. What do you think, cameraman? He's, he approves. The cameraman is also my son, so it's nice. All right.
obviously using only the finest hollow ground guitar specific tools to remove these screws. No, I'm just kidding. Everybody should have one of these Victor Knox guys. Man. It's very, very useful. We're halfway there. I know this is super exciting. If I'd had a drill and all that, that'd be really cool. But I am so excited to play this, you know, actually tune it up inside and play it because it seems really cool. Oh, so close. Come on now. All right, got that one out. And um, of course, all the plastic still has, all the, you know, guards and everything have the uh, plastic protective film on it. So that's that's to be expected, And but it's good. Look like pretty nice screws for the, the stainless steel screws. They're not like coated pot metal. Uh, looks like, okay, so here we go, taking this off. And, you know, even the finish on you know where the where the back plate is is just fine um so yeah th this right here is screwed as tight as they can because you'll see that uh can you get right in here and look at the ends of, of these screws here you'll see that the thread is all the way inside the body it stops there so you can't thread really in any further so what i'm gonna do is let's see if it works by the way i'm gonna check this joint here to see okay so there's a little finger that they soldered this on it looks like it's secure this is your ground that is probably why we weren't getting as much hum as we could have had so let's just loosen this up a bit oh man okay Anyway, uh, so there's, there's a couple of turns there, I think. When I get inside and work on it, I'll probably you know, get a proper fitting screwdriver and it'll be much easier to actually turn this thing. And then, okay, there's a bit. All right, so that's cool. And then now if we take the, I don't know if this, that was enough to make a difference, but it gives you the idea of what you could do. You could unscrew those by quite a bit and still have it in there securely. Just like a couple turns of the um, of those screws made it so that I can now I don't feel like I'm going to break the thing. So, just word to the wise: if you're feeling like it's tight, take a look at that. Don't be afraid to loosen up, and it gives you a chance to look inside and check your ground connection with that solder point. And um, yeah, man, hundred dollars, crazy. Look on eBay, maybe. I mean, that's what I did. And if you see one of these for ninety-nine bucks absolutely buy it I mean just for the parts alone there's I mean I'm sure you know, these are not expensive tuners or anything but there's no way like I said at the beginning of the video there's no way I could put this together by myself for a hundred bucks so there you go and I hope you get one I hope you love it and 